Good morning, this is Duane N6DMR with BridgeCom Technical Support. This video is going to show SkyBridge dual band digital hotspot uh, customers that have not bought the plug and play, how to initially configure their SkyBridge and get themselves going. So first thing we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna plug in the SkyBridge. Also, we're going to plug in the dongle for USB to RJ45 or CAT5 internet. We're going to plug that internet cable into your local router and power up the SkyBridge. Now this is gonna take a couple of minutes, so have some patience. The Raspberry Pi computers are not fast. So one thing I wanna mention is that I've connected my new SkyBridge digital hotspot to my router Netgear 39 by hard cable. Now, I'm wirelessly logged into that network, which is okay, but it's very critical that you need to have your PC connected to the same network, Wi-Fi or hotspot, that is connected to the SkyBridge. This is critical. SkyBridge is plugged into the same router that you log your PC into so that you can see the SkyBridge and make the configuration. Okay, without any further uh, wait, let's go get into the configuration part. So if the first thing I need to do is I need to find out where my SkyBridge is on my network. So I'm going to open up Angry IP Scanner. Now I've already done a video earlier on this and uh, it's available if you should need to uh, look at how to load I uh, Angry IP. Pretty simple. Anyway, A Angry IP will scan the entire IP range of my current router connection. We're going ahead to go ahead and scan. I'm not going to do any pausing in this situation here. Sometimes I will pause just to save time, but this is a fairly quick uh, scan and it's good for someone uh, that's new to see the entire process. So we should be almost ready and we are. So what this window is, it tells you the scanning is complete and I'm not gonna go through these details are really not helpful. So for now, we'll just close this window. Now we're gonna look, are there any Pi Star, which is what the operating system is in your SkyBridge, connections to my computer? And here's one right here. I'm on 192.168.1.10, and it's a Pi Star connection. So that's the information I need. I need this IP address to browser, open a browser, and go in and find this Pi Star. Now remember, your network will be different from mine, and your numbers will probably be different. So when you find them, write them down and be ready to put them into your browser. So let's close the Angry IP Scanner, no need to have it open. Let's open a new browser and let's type in my address, 192.168.1.10. Okay, make sure you type this in the URL path, not in a search you need to be looking right in the internet URL. Okay, I hit the enter key. This is your first look at your PyStar digital voice dashboard. Now this is gonna, this is c coming up as the PyStar and the SkyBridge comes out of the box. So this is the out of the box configuration. It comes as a voice dashboard for a bogus person, bogus call sign. Now, we're going to have to go in and make some setups on this, but this is the PyStar f uh, software that's in the SkyBridge, and this is the important stuff that you're going to need to know to get started, okay? So rather than go through the dashboard at this point, we're going to move right over and get started into configuration. So I'm going to click on the configuration menu right here. Now, the first time you open a browser and go into the PyStar configuration, you need to know the password and the username. So this is very easy. The username is PyStar, all lowercase with a dash. And then the password is Raspberry with a P, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. So we'll sign in. Okay, so now we've gone from the dashboard, signed in as a uh, user for the PyStar Digital Voice configuration, and we're now in the configuration window. Now this is the configuration window you're gonna see that's defaulted when you receive your SkyBridge. 
So nothing is on, it's got the MMDVM host, simplex mode. All of this is correct, except for, for the personal uh, settings for you. All right, so I'm not gonna go through this uh, completely. What I'm gonna do is open up a fully configured uh, configuration page, and I'm gonna go through the exact settings that you need to make. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna pause this video and we're gonna move over and I'm gonna open up a pre-configured configuration window. Hey, welcome back. I've now got the configuration <laughs> window set up for what you're gonna to need to input to get your SkyBridge up and running. So I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly, but hopefully you can rerun this video or I am slow enough that you can understand it. So the first thing we'll see is we need to make sure it's in the MMDVM host mode, and that should come pre-configured. Simplex mode also would become come uh, pre-configured. Now, as we get down to the MMDVM host configuration, these are all standard times and values. The only thing we have to do here is turn on DMR mode. So let's turn it off once, and let's turn it back on again. So you can see that the red, when it turns red, it's on. All right, so that's number one, turn on DMR mode. Now on the display, this is also preset in the default. So it will be OLED type six, it'll be a modem and ON7 LDS L3. Just remember, you can pull down and adjust these, type six, L3, all right? So that takes us through the, the MMDVM host configuration window. Let's move on down to general configuration. Okay, so the host name, you don't change, it's PyStar, and that's because this is the operating system. You would need to put your node call sign in. Now, in this particular case, I've used a little bit of a bogus call sign. I don't really want my call sign and my DMR ID out in a video that 100 or 200 people are gonna watch it's just too easy for someone to make a mistake and start kind of using my DMR ID in error. So what we've done is I've done an N6ABC call sign. I've put in a DMR ID of 3164290. Now, the radio frequency is defaulted. This frequency can be any VHF, UHF frequency, as long as it doesn't interfere with low power satellite transmissions. PyStar is very smart. If you try to put in a frequency that will interfere, it will turn red and it will not let you do any transmitting on that frequency. So this particular unit came defaulted 438.800 for the frequency and it's green, which tells me we're in good shape. It's a good frequency to use. And this frequency is a simplex frequency for your radio because you're transmitting and receiving on the same frequency. Then comes latitude. You'd put your latitude in. This can be found easily on the internet. Just I do Google searches for Latin long and put my uh, zip code in. Uh, there's many, many programs for that. Anyway, lat latitude, longitude goes in. The town that you're in, I happen to be in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, this little emblem here is uh, my... Uh, uh, RoboForm, which uh, puts in passwords or fills uh, screen fields for me if I need to, so please ignore that. Okay, country, we'd use the country USA. Now, this URL is a lookup URL from QRZ, which will allow uh, a PyStar system and people that are using the PyStar system to find you in QRZ. So it's very simple http colon backslash backslash www.qrz.com and here's where you just have to know forward slash db delta boy for database and then your call sign and as you'll see this call sign matches the bogus call sign that i put in here now the next step is critical what radio and modem type needs to be in this unit well, it's ZoomSpot, dual band Raspberry Pi hat that's attached to the uh, GPIO or the general purpose IO uh, 
header of the pie. Now, I'll pull this down and I'll show you that there's many, many, many different modems that can be used. So the one we're looking for, ZumSpot, dual band, Raspberry Pi Hat, GPIO. Okay, so we'll just put, we won't try to enter that again. Now the mode, the node type is whether you want your SkyBridge hotspot to be private just to your DMR ID, or whether you'd like to make it public so that if you have a friend over, or if you're using it remotely in a group, everyone can transmit on it. Most people will set this up as public. Next, we have an APRS host question. I pick the closest APRS to .NET to my location. In this particular case, it's Maine. Uh, there's many, many, many you can choose. They all should work. The only need, reason you need this is if the you have the SkyBridge turned on in Brandmeister, in your Brandmeister account, to send APRS automatically. Now we'll look for a time zone. Here's where you're going to be making some you know, smart changes, hopefully. So I'm not in Europe. Okay, I'm in America. Uh, let's see, I need to get something that's in the uh, USA, America time zone that I'm in. Here's America, New York. That is my time zone. So that's what I'm going to pick. And dashboard language uh, for the key keypad would should be set to English US. Now, when you finish these changes, when you finish these changes, check them over, make sure everything is right. They don't take until you use one of these apply changes blocks, which I'm gonna do. It's gonna take a few minutes. Down in the left-hand corner, you're going to see the PyStar configuration resetting itself. So before I, before I do this, I'm gonna move down and set the DMR configuration up so we only have to apply changes once. Just make sure you've double checked all of these settings. Feel free to go back and look at this video again and again if you need to. Now, we've moved down to DMR configuration. So remember, we turned DMR mode on right up here in the host configuration, which is why we have a DMR window. Now, SkyBridge can be used for many other modes, but BridgeCom, we support the DMR mode only. You're gonna have to find local help to get into some of the other modes. Okay, moving back down to the DMR configuration. What you're gonna to wanna to do if you're in the United States is you're gonna select the DMR master, okay? Now, the default code plug, pardon me, the default configuration should say BM United States 3101. Now, there's just a few cho choices for, for United States. We'll pop them up. There's 3101, 3102, 3103. You choose, uh, it's kind of like, just kind of a, a random pick. However, I will say that if you're having, if you're ever having any problems getting into Brandmeister, going back and changing this DMR master may be helpful. Sometimes there are glitches in their master servers. For our case, we're gonna just leave this at 3101. Hotspot security, do not, do not, I repeat, put anything in this block. This refers to the Brandmeister account setup where you can assign a hotspot security code to Brandmeister to protect your uh, SkyBridge. I would say until you get using this for a while and you understand what you're doing, it's going to be defaulting to no password and that's the way it should stay. Now, down here, there's a DMR ESSID. And as you can see by the window, it says this is the extended ID to make your DMI ID eight or nine digits long. So what happens with uh, Brandmeister is they'll use your DMR ID for your hotspot. If you get this to the point where you have more than one hotspot, that will get very confusing, probably not even work properly. So what they allow you to do is set a two digit identifier they will still see your DMR ID, but they'll also see the different hotspots that you have. So in our case, let's set this to 01, assuming that it's our first uh, sky bridge. Then next is DMR color code. These are preset. Uh, this should be one. That's what we use in our code plugs and our radios. Um, you can choose any that you want as long as you match 
this color code in your code plug of the radio. Now, DMR embedded is off, but DMR dump T data is turned on. Okay, so we've gone through DMR configuration. Before we apply changes, let's move down. We're going to do firewall configuration. This is default. You don't have to change it. I recommend not changing it. It's private, 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 auto AP on, UPnP on. That's default, and that's the way you would, would run it. So we've basically finished configuring this. Something I want to uh, uh, talk to you about, just in case, is down here on the bottom, remote access password. Whatever you do, until you know what you're doing, do not put a password in here. Do not put a password in here. That's going to change the default entry password. If you forget it, you're going to have to re-set uh, your uh, PyStar configuration right from the get-go. You'll have to write a new image to it. You, anyway, just don't do it. Just stay away from this. Also, wireless configuration will not be part of this video. I have done wireless configuration in many different videos. This video is just to get you up and running. So now, we made a lot of changes here. We're going to go ahead and apply these changes. Again, watch down to the left-hand bottom of the screen as we do this. Apply changes. You see it's waiting for my PyStar. It's waiting for 192.168.1.10. Of course, yours will be different if you have a different IP address. In the meantime, this configuration is being saved. So I will pause this. Well, let's go ahead and watch it. And since you guys are all new to this, at least that's my premise, let's go ahead and leave this video just be a little bit longer. And let's watch as the configuration saves and the uh, PyStar software reboots itself. <laughs> Remember, the Raspberry Pi is a slow computer. There's nothing you can do about it. It is perfect for what we use it for. It's used in a lot of applications for controlling things in ham radio, but it is not a supercomputer by any means which basically on the price of it, it shouldn't be. All right, now this window popping up is the beginning of reestablishing the configuration window. Okay, this means all the changes that we have made are now currently in this PyStar configuration. So as I move down, we'll just verify it. I'm going to go through this quickly. Yes, it's got the call sign. It's got the DMR. It's got the right um, lookup. It's got the address uh, or the location. It's the correct modem type. It's a public, which is what I like to use in case my friends come over or in case we're in a group. We've got main APRS. We Our time zone system, New York, for me, English. We're on the Brandmeister server, color code one, and I've set my ESSID in Brandmeister as 01. This is a, a completely set up, ready to go for plug in Skybridge. So let's go ahead now and I'll demo a quick check with my own personal code plug and make sure that these settings with the SkyBridge plugged into the internet with the hardwired cable that came with it, we'll take a check and see if we're getting out on Parrot. So I am going to pause this for a second, and then we'll come back to this. OK, welcome back. Uh, now, we've gone from the configuration window. I've rebooted my, Pi, my SkyBridge with the new configuration, just to be sure that it's up and running. We're going to, we've gone from configuration directly to dashboard. This is your dashboard. So the first thing we'll do is we'll see if we get any kind of a connection. And you see I cheated. I didn't want to not have a connection, so I've already tested it. But we'll do it one more time. This is N6DMR. I'm testing on Parrot 123456 to check my SkyBridge is hardwired to the internet and configured properly for transmit and receive. Looks like Parrot was busy. Okay, so let's go ahead now that we've got everything connected. 
actually, by looking at our dashboard, we went from our configuration page to our dashboard. We can see that we actually have gateway activity and local RF activity. So this is up and running. But I wanted to demo this for you. Um, I did run into a little bit of a problem. If you can see all these 3100 talk groups, I had 3100 set as a static talk group because I like to listen to it during the day. But it was there was so much traffic on 3100, it was interrupting my uh, testing to PyStar. Uh, testing of PyStar to Parrot, I'm sorry. So anyway, let's go ahead. I'm gonna key up Parrot here and uh, you'll hear it in my microphone, hopefully. N6 DMR, N6 DMR testing Parrot for a response. Checking the sky bridge, initial configuration is working with a hardwired internet connection. N6 DMR, N6 DMR testing Parrot for a response. Checking the sky bridge, initial configuration is working with a hardwired internet connection. Okay, so that was successful. So all the configuration we did was correct. You can follow it in the video using your own DMR ID and your own call sign and, every, and everything else should be the same and you should get the same results. Again, I'm on 192.168.1.10, which we found with Angry IP Scanner, but make sure your PC is connected to the same router or the same internet system that you've set your SkyBridge to. This is critical, important. Okay, so, so much for that. This video was a success. I hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to the next one.